What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to reinforce certain parts of your hull with a fiberglass epoxy resin. Um, in my case, I'll be doing the jet pump tunnel as well as the front storage bin area in that common spot where the ST3s can crack. Um, I have no problem with anything on mine, but since I'm able to hit 86, 87 miles per hour, it's definitely something I wanna do to reinforce the jet pump tunnel because there's a lot of pressure in there now. Um, and you know, obviously since I have everything apart, I might as well just reinforce the front of the ski as well. So the sea dews come with a polyester resin hull, which is, it's okay. It's certainly not the strongest. Uh, it would be much better if they used a epoxy resin. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So I've already removed pretty much everything in the way. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't even look like I removed anything, but um, I got rid of the IBR. IBR is gone, the intake, uh, intercooler hoses, the siphon balers, all that stuff to get access to the jet pump tunnel. Um, basically what I'm gonna be doing here is laying some fiberglass sheets on either side of the tunnel, on top of the tunnel and around the area and I'm also going to be laying some fiberglass sheets in this area, not going all the way up or anything, but just kind of, you know, in this general area. Um, and actually, Sea Dude does have some instructions on how to do that. And I'll show you the resin that I'm going to be doing, but uh, I just wanted to give you a backstory as to why I'm doing this. Um, and I also just made a video on how to remove the front storage bin area, if you guys are interested. But um, yeah, let me show you what I've taken out so far. All right, it's crazy that it doesn't even look like it, but this is everything that's come out so far. Obviously we have the intake, intercooler hosing, the balers. Uh, this is one of the fresh water feeds that comes out from the back of the jet pump area. And then obviously we have our IBR. And just to get a little bit more room, I also took out the supercharger. So I'm gonna show you this here. And of course I'll post this in the video as well. But this is the area that CDU recommends for reinforcing the jet pump tunnel. So you can see that it's either side of the tunnel as well as some structure over the top. Um, the front, let's see, oh, my finger's not working on the screen. Uh, this is the area we're going to be reinforcing with fiberglass sheets in the bow area. Um, they go all the way up to the top. I'm not gonna go that high. I'm just going to kind of reinforce the middle area at the lower where it tends to crack on some people. Um, and you can also see in this picture here, they're showing you where the weak spots are. Uh, and actually they have a crack here so you can kind of reference your own ski um, so you know where to lay some fiberglass. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is prep the area in the hull. I'm gonna sand it with a, I guess a 100 grit sandpaper just to kind of roughen up the surface where I'm gonna be laying the fiberglass sheets. Um, and then I'm going to clean it all down with a acetone. You can use rubbing alcohol as well, uh, but you certainly do not want to be laying the resin or anything on a dirty hole. So the one downside to doing this on mine is of course I have a bilge pump that has been 5200 to the, the hole. So there's no way I'm getting that out. And you know, if I try to pull it up, it's either gonna break the plastic or rip the fiberglass. So I'm gonna leave that in place and try to do that, try to lay these sheets around that. Uh, I'll see what I can do, but everything else is pretty much out of the way. Um, the fiberglass is a little bit messy, so I would cover up anything you don't want to get any resin on. Um, should not be too, too terrible for me here but uh, I might also move a couple more hoses just to get a little bit better access. So that's it for here. And then of course up here, we're also going to be sanding some material and then wiping it down with some acetone. So let's do that. All right guys, used 120 grit sandpaper to kind of rough up the surface in the front and the back. Uh, shop backed it out so all the dust is gone. Next thing we're gonna do is wipe it down with some acetone. I have plenty of this laying around. So we're gonna clean up the surfaces back here and we're also gonna clean up the surfaces in the front. All right guys, we're getting closer to the fun part now. Um, I decided to go with an epoxy resin. It's a little bit stronger than the factory polyester resin that the hulls are made of. 
and I got my resin from Total Boot. This is the high performance. They also have a marine grade, five in one. Uh, but after talking to Total Boat, we decided that the high performance two to one was going to be a stronger hold for what we're trying to accomplish here. They give you pumps for each of these. This is a two to one. So we're gonna use two parts resin to one part hardener. Uh, of course, they give you the instructions and everything. It's obviously very messy and the fiberglass will sting. So they give you some gloves as well. We have our mixing cups. Um, there's a couple different tools we're going to use for laying the fiberglass. Um, might just use paint brushes, not exactly sure yet, but we have this tool here, which I think will be great for getting in between the pump tunnel and the floor. Uh, and then we have this to kind of lay the sheets up in the front as well. And then I'm going to be using a 1708 biaxial fiberglass mat. Uh, this seems to be the strongest for this application. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay longer, bigger sheets in the front just because it's a bigger area to cover. And for the jet pump tunnel, I'm gonna cut this into smaller strips. So uh, probably like four inch by one inch or four inch by two inch or something, just so we have smaller pieces to work with. Uh, because if you're trying to cover the entire jet pump tunnel with a larger piece, it's just gonna be a pain. It's gonna be messy. Um, <clears throat> this is the stuff we're gonna use for that. So I'm gonna get prepped here. I'm going to, uh, I'm probably gonna pre-cut these first, just so that I'm not have, don't have to worry about it after this stuff is already mixed. This is a medium hardener, so it will get kind of tacky in 20 minutes, and in 30 minutes it'll be hard to the touch. So we have to work with it relatively quickly. Ideally, this should be done on a 70 degree or warmer day. Uh, it's just about that here, but of course, it's as windy as can be. Um, I've been waiting for a nice calm day, but it never seems to happen. I'm sure after this is all done, it'll be perfectly fine as usual. Uh, but the one downside is debris from trees keeps on landing in the spots I'm trying to work on. So I just have to keep an eye on that. So I'm gonna get this stuff all staged here. And then once I'm ready, I'll show you where we're starting off. Here's where we are so far. I have plenty of strips ready to go and I have some spare in the back just in case I run out. This is one of those things where you wanna have plenty of pre-cut strips ready to go because that stuff does harden pretty quick. And the last thing you wanna do is be fumbling to cut some more uh, as it's hardening up in your mixing cup. So I think my plan of action is to, I'm just going to do the jet pump tunnel for now because that was the main concern. Um, and then after that, then I'll go back and do the front. Uh, but what we're gonna do is, you know, as with any fiberglass, we're going to mix up the epoxy. We'll put a epoxy layer down and then we'll put on some of the wet strips and we'll just do it in small sections at a time. Uh, this part's gonna be a little hard to get on video, but I'll see what I can do. And again, uh, just remember this is a two to one ratio for the high performance total boot epoxy. We're gonna do two parts of the resin uh, to one part hardener. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in, up in a cup here and uh, we'll get started. And there we have it. The layer of fiberglass is in. Now we just have to wait for it to dry, uh, which could take you know several hours or days. So I'm gonna put a cover over this just to keep the tree debris and everything else from landing on it but went down pretty well pretty easy uh, just not really too much to it you kind of just wet the surface uh, wet the fiberglass lay it down and then kind of sponge it on or wipe it on whatever you want to do but pretty simple so I'm gonna take a few minutes and then I'm gonna start working on the front all right guys for the front of the hole I'm going to be using larger sheets these are like one foot by one foot squares it's just gonna be a lot easier since that's completely open space. So these are the ones I'm gonna use. And just like in the past, I have a lot of pre-cut sheets here that I can use. Definitely more than I'll actually need. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. And like I said, I'm not gonna be doing the entire front of the bow. Um, I'm only gonna be doing the sections that tend to crack, uh, which is just above the keel uh, on either side. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the uh, Total Boat epoxy resin here. And by the way, guys, I forgot to mention, these um, dispensers are pre-calibrated. So when I mentioned uh, two to one, I didn't mean to do pump two of this to one of this, they already pre-calibrated. Um, so one pump of this and one pump of this are already the correct amount for what you need. 
So I think for the jet pump tunnel, I did like 15 pumps or something like that. The front is certainly gonna take a lot more, so I'll probably do 20 or 25 pumps each, uh, and we'll see how that goes. You can see that I barely used anything at all here, so let's do the front nail. Alright guys, and that is it. I ended up doing two layers of fiberglass on the jet pump tunnel and just about two layers on the front. You can kind of see the overlapping layers there. So uh, this is going to take about three hours to become tack free and then it'll be another who knows how long before you can actually start using it. I think it's a few days uh, with the medium hardener, but uh, that's pretty much it for this. Um, on the ST3s, it's beneficial to do regardless of your power level, especially in this area. Um, but for the jet pump tunnel, I mean, there are people that blow them on a stock, completely stock with no modifications done. Um, I personally have never had a problem, but uh, I'm just reinforcing it anyway, just to be safe. So very, very easy to do. Uh, I'll actually link the parts that I used in the Amazon um, in the description so uh, you could do it yourself if you're interested but if you guys have any questions at all please feel free to message me if not that's pretty much it for this video